so thanks uh, once again karn and uh, team tmtc uh, including my uh, good friend uh, emmanuel who uh, yesterday uh, told me that he is uh, you know happy to host me uh, so it's been a great pleasure and my relationship with uh, tmtc goes back uh, years my relationship and friendship with karn goes back even longer <laughs> so what a pleasure it is uh, to be here with all of you uh, i want to start with uh, once again saying a namaste and good morning to all of you this namaste is to each of you as participants as well as to our gurus who have guided me to this journey of indian wisdom okay now uh, we have a very exciting time ahead of us all right and i am really uh, excited but yet at the same time i'm worried that by the time i finish i won't have any time to take your questions <laughs> but i'm going to do justice to our interaction so i have uh, a set of stories over here but really the focus is on our learning today so it is not so important that i cover all the stories as it is important that you get yourself completely oriented to what indian wisdom is and how powerful it is and hence incredible relevance so when we say incredible india there are many things incredible about it only one of which is stories you could also say i am going to introduce you to a land called bharat why because in the modern day we have all become part of a modern country called india but india used to be a land called bharat and bharat had a culture which was so rich that management and leadership runs at least 10000 years old or more so if i say examples illustration cases in leadership you probably think management gurus and examples of ibm apple and so on but what i want to tell you is that bharat has the maximum lesson as a no So and Rajesh, your audio has gone uh, low for for couple of seconds. Should I go on the audio? Um, please try. Can I do that? Can you hear me well? Sorry. We are not able to hear you, Rajesh. Rajesh, please call in. Right? Rajesh, Rajesh, yeah. So uh, everyone, if you can just uh, wait for couple of seconds. uh rajesh would uh, now use the audio uh, through the phone so that uh, his audio is coming out clear it was quite clear when he started but after uh, i think couple of seconds uh, there was a lag or it was sounding distant uh, so we pressed uh, the other option so uh, let's see we should be able to yes. hear him can you audio. hear me yes rajesh we are able to hear you so i would suggest okay. you can put that on speaker if you would like uh no okay. i think i'll continue i'll take off my video okay fine okay so friends you all can hear me well tejal am i audible yes sir this your audible okay so i will continue so i was saying that we are in the land which has got lots and lots of stories each of which leads to incredible lessons in management and leadership so let's go into this journey i have five stories for you over here and what i want you to commit is that you will reflect on each of these stories on your own in the few moments before i show you what those lessons are which are of course limited because there is a lot more could you move to the next slide please tejan my first story is called samashti samashti as some of you may know and many of you may not is a very powerful word which stands for collective 
let's listen to the story long long ago there was a forest in which there were hundreds of trees thousands of trees and these trees were very very old some of them thousands of years old and wherever there are trees wherever there is greenery humans have to reach there some day so there were also some woodcutters who used to be on the boundaries of this forest and striking away at the trees over there in order to get firewood which they could sell and make a livelihood out of one of the woodcutters decided that he didn't want to compete with all the other woodcutters he would go deeper into the forest and so he goes deeper into the forest keeps walking till he comes upon the most splendid sight he sees a tree which is huge this tree may be one of those which has been thousands of years old because the branches of this tree spread about half a kilometer in each direction and looking at that tree there was a smile on the woodcutter's face not because he was fond of trees but because for him it meant livelihood for months together maybe years and so he sharpened his axe and just as he was going to land his first strike on the wood he suddenly heard a voice speak up the voice said young man listen to me before you strike he looks around there's no one in sight he's wondering who spoke the voice continues i am the tree young man and then the tree continues looking at the silence of the woodcutter it says young man if you look up you will see that it is nearly the onset of spring and as spring sets in my tree my leaves will be covered with thousands of beautiful flowers and with the flowers will come the bees hundreds of butterflies of many species and also several birds so please can you wait until spring is over before you start knocking me down and looking that looking at the fact that he had got the attention of the woodcutter the tree continued it said and after spring will be summer in summer all the flowers will turn to fruits and then there will be a new set of creatures that will come to taste these fruits to eat these fruits there will be squirrels there will be bats there will be monkeys there will also be a snake family at the bottom of the tree there will also be woodpeckers so many creatures so if you could please wait till even summer is completed and then comes monsoon but i won't ask you to wait until then even before the start of monsoon you can start cutting me down but i have a small request please don't cut me down all at once from different directions start in one place so that the creatures who have made my person their home have a chance to move to other trees and one last request when you start cutting my branches if you could please bring those branches down very very slowly because if they fall with a thud they will destroy those tiny little saplings that you can see all around me in my shade i wouldn't want them to die before they've had a chance to live and if you can please accede to all my requests please go ahead and do what you have to 
listening to this the wood cutter is stunned he is amazed because he never expected a tree to speak he knows this is no ordinary tree and the messages that it gave held him spellbound he realizes it is nothing but a bodhi tree a tree which is enlightened like the buddha he is transformed in that moment and he walks away from there never ever to come back friends this story is called samashti samashti stands for the collective and the story comes from the jatak tales which are at least 1500 years to 2000 years old i'm going to ask you in the next couple of minutes before i show you one large lesson from this story i would encourage you to think of what your own lessons are okay and you can put your points in the chat box if you wish to each of this has got lots of stories uh, lots of lessons each story i'm going to request you participants uh nearly 100 of you now that's wonderful to think what this story means in terms of leadership in terms of management in terms of the modern world please put it down on the chat i look forward eagerly to your comments before i show you what i think the key lesson from this story is so go ahead i'm giving you a minute please go ahead put it on the chat who's going to be the first one so you can see there's a chat uh, a button that's available all controls as karan has said are at the bottom yes respect nature empathy wonderful that's a great start listen attentively and then decide wow that's that's the first time i've heard this wonderful taking all the stakeholders in confidence lovely look at how different your responses are right one story and so many varied responses please continue everyone preserving nature and environment wonderful we have to protect and take care of our successor both in professional and personal aspects how awesome is that lovely okay i'm going to request tejal to share my lesson because we have lot of uh, stories and we have limited time you can continue to keep on posting your lessons do not compare with other think the bigger picture wonderful so who are leaders is one of the ways in which this story can be described This story says leaders are those who think the highest good of the maximum number of people we call them stakeholders in the modern day for the longest period of time the indian phrase for it is samasta jan kalyane nirantaram which is the same as what said in english over there i want you to think about this the tree was not only thinking for birds and animals least of it for himself it was thinking even of the woodcutter because if the woodcutter cuts down such a tree this tree is actually the one that sustains the entire ecosystem called the forest the tree gone the forest will disappear in a few years maybe a hundred or years but it will surely go so the leaders are those who think the highest good of the maximum number of people creatures environment and the last part is most important for a long period okay that's what is important and isn't that what we call a strategic thinking today yes so the tree was a bodhi vriksh for a reason for the love and care it 
had for all the species living in and around it. Thanks, Bharat, for that powerful lesson. Go to the next slide, please. My second story is about storytelling itself. And you could say it was the origin of storytelling tradition, not just in India, but probably in the world, because Panchatantra is that collection of stories that, that got translated into 60 plus languages exists in every tradition that went from India to Persia and the rest of the world. The creator of that was a teacher called Acharya Vishnu Sharma. Here is the story. Once upon a time, in a kingdom called Mahilaropya, somewhere in the south of India, there was a glorious king, there, a glorious king called Amar Shakti. And Amar Shakti had a very popular reign. His subjects loved him, his people loved him, his mantris loved him, they all loved him. Now what happened is one day, the king suddenly realized that he needs to have a succession in place, that he is getting old, and that he needs to appoint a successor very quickly, because life is uncertain, and Mahila Ropya needed to know their next leader, who would be the next Yuraj. Luckily for him, there were three princes. Yeah, you can see the image on the screen. There were three princes. The three princes are said to have the names Ananta Shakti, Bahu Shakti, and Ugra Shakti. And they were coming of age, they were around 16 years old, each of them, with just a year's difference, maybe 16, 15, 14. And the king decided to interview them for their readiness. And when he interviewed them, he was surprised to find that none of them seemed to be ready with the knowledge of what is today's governance and leadership. He was distressed and he didn't know what to do. In his day-to-day uh, -day busyness of working, just like we have today, he lost his work-life balance and he forgot to check whether his children are ready for the future, future skills as we call it. So he knows now it's an emergency situation. He calls a meeting of all his ministers, his cabinet, and he puts in front of them the problem of his kingdom, right? A problem which was far more serious than today's Kangana or Ria. And he asks all the ministers, that what should I do now? Please suggest. I need a successor very, very soon. And one of the mantris said that you can start the education within 12 years period, they will be ready. The king says, this is of no use to me. The next king says, the next minister says, my, I'm sorry, the next minister says, we can cut that period into half if we do only the essentials and it can be, they can be ready in six years. The king says, even that won't do. Finally, the king looks at his oldest minister called Sumati, who was also the wisest. And Sumati tells him, Your Highness, there is only one solution. There is a wonderful teacher in our kingdom by the name of Acharya Vishnu Sharma. He is now old, but he is the teacher who can probably teach the princes only in a very, very brief period. The king says, really? Please call him in respectfully right now. So Acharya Vishnu Sharma is summoned. He is 80 years young and his face is glowing with wisdom. The king pays his respects to him, the Acharya pays his respects back, and then the king excitedly narrates the problem. 
And he says, I have a problem of succession. I am told you are a great teacher and you can have my princes ready very, very soon. If you do that, I will be willing to give you riches and cattle and clothes and much, much more. Acharya Vishnu Sharma looks back at him and he says, Sir, I have not come here for your rewards. I have come here because the nation has a problem and I, as a teacher, retired teacher now, have had enough experience to prepare your three princes in six months and I will present them back to you in that period. The king's joy knew no bounds. Acharya Vishnu Sharma asked for the three princes to be called. He tells the king that now they will be in my custody. They cannot be taught here in the royal comforts of this palace. I will take them to my Gurukul. The king gives him a complete freedom to do whatever he wants. So Acharya Vishnu Sharma, 80-year-old man, leading the way, takes those three princes to the forest, walks with them for several kilometers till he reaches his village and finally to his ashram. It is late evening and Vishnu Sharma asks these boys to retire for the night after giving them some food to eat and tells them, you must be tired. Let's start tomorrow morning. The princes are tired and they fall asleep immediately. The great Acharya does not sleep because he knows he has a great challenge on hand. Here are the, six, the three princes who have been raised in royal comfort but have barely any education. How are they going to learn governance and all that is required before that in the short period of six months which he has committed? So in the night, for the next few hours, he devises a methodology, the same methodology that several facilitators use today, including myself. He creates 72 stories and he puts them into five categories. These are the five systems that need to be learned to bring about effective Niti Shastra, the science of governance and rule well. And these 68 stories then form the Panchatantra using which Acharya Vishnu Sharma over the period of the next six months tells them each story, asks them to think about the story. They eagerly not only share the lessons that they learned, but they also say, what happens next? Because they are all woven so beautifully, one story is woven with the next. And these stories are narrated so beautifully in Sanskrit. Today we have lost a lot of its essence. At the end of six months, not only have the three princes learned all the wisdom of these stories, through that wisdom, they have gained some incredible lessons which would be useful for them to become the next Yuraj. And beyond that, they have become extremely hungry to learn more because they have discovered so much in these six months with this wise old man. They can barely control their eagerness to now practice the lessons learned. These stories seem to be stories around animals and birds by and large, but in the guise of these birds and animals are actually subjects and ministers and kings and people and enemies and so on. All of which taught governance to these three princes. So that's the story behind the stories of Panchatantra. I told you how Panchatantra came about just at the time when it was most required perhaps because this was the onset of what is now called as the current era CE. 
So in the next two minutes, I want you to share, just as you did beautifully earlier, what lessons did you learn from this story in leadership, management, learning and development, and beyond? Please put it in the chat box, and in the next two, three slides, I will share with you some of the most powerful lessons, both from this story as well as from Niti Shastra. Yes, you can start putting down your learnings, your lessons. Easy way of communication, right? Isn't it amazing? And every story makes people so eager to listen. They are all yours. Just think about it. How beautiful. Because princes were never taught in this way before this gentleman began. Sure, there were stories of the Upanishads, there were stories of our Purans, but these stories were very different and made it even more appealing. Please continue putting in your lessons, friends. Come on. All of you are such wonderful, uh, I would say, participants, people practicing in your respective organizations and enterprises. Oh, that's my friend, Raghu. Uh, let me see what you said. Oh, now there are so many uh, lessons coming. To become a visionary, far-sighted, bring in good governance, cultivate resilience and sharp observation. Stories make you visualize concepts in a simple way for lifelong recall. That's fantastic, Rahul. Appreciation of the status of students. This is what we call as learner-centered, sorry, uh, learner-centered learning, right? That's what we call it, a learner-centered methodology today. All the new startups of today's era focus around this. Appreciation of uh, the status of students, innovative learning process, lot of emphasis on data, and stats in decision making, which is devoid of a connect. Beautiful. I think that's extremely powerful. Understanding mindset of the learner, designing course methodology accordingly. Perfect. Subin says, explained in a simple form, which made the princes understand the concepts. Absolutely. There was all the chance that if they were taught theory, the way it is traditionally taught, Imagine the plight of these youngsters who just hadn't learned enough earlier. They would be all at sixes and sevens, and they would not be ready in the six months, right? Now, at the end of six months, they were all ready, and the king had a problem of plenty. He had to decide which of those three would be most suitable to be Yuvraj, and that's a good problem to have. Get a good teacher who will not make them forget the lesson with power, powerful and peculiar story. Sejal, next slide, please. Please go on putting in your lessons. They're useful for me as well as everyone else. Here are a few of my own. Leaders are teachers. Teachers are leaders. Start with noble objectives. Vishnu Sharma was very clear. He wanted to have the nation's problem solved, the kingdom's problem solved. So values of teacher are invaluable. He was not looking for rewards. He was not looking for money. He had had his glory. He wanted to solve and address the challenge. Determination of learner-focused methodology. Emphasis on reflection and introspection, just the way you are doing it now. Goes without saying, power of stories. Each story is much deeper than what we have known the Panchatantra for, friends. I encourage each of you to go back. There are several great lessons for the modern world. Creation of hunger for learning. Next slide, please, Tijal. I'm going to share with you now eight steps for very powerful learning which Vishnu Sharma used to create Perfect learning in these three princes. I don't have the time to go through these in detail, but you can see the steps. He created hunger for learning. That in turn created deep listening. There was reflection done for absorption. 
because of which the retention was better stories made them very playful they were playing with the concepts in mind and you can presume that they kept asking more and more questions which were clarified introspection to pick key ideas was done by them rejecting the remaining once clarified by the acharya the teacher till they could finally firmly focus on the main concepts which they were expected to learn the distilled thoughts eight steps in the learning continuum called shushrusha shravan grahan dharan vigyan uha apoha tatva abhinivesha says kautilya or chanakya gives pradnya or wisdom to the princes today's leaders all of you and one more learning from the same kautilya chanakya next slide please which tells us that succession is key he told us this 2500 years ago that creation is the first step of creating a large kingdom creating good governance but the next step is consolidation after which comes expansion the missing block between expansion and creation is succession which finally the king amar shakti realized and with the help of a great teacher called acharya vishnu sharma he was able to plug in and prepare the princes next story my next story is about indra dumna's predicament this is a very powerful story and i want you to listen very carefully because we are moving to a different realm now we move to heaven because indra dumna was a king on planet earth who had done so much good that he was promoted to swarg which which was the land of luxuries swarg lok and he was enjoying all these luxuries when suddenly the boss of that realm called indra called indra dumna and told him that we have a rule here a policy here which will require you to go back to earth indra dumna is shocked he said what kind of policy is this i have just landed over here i have barely completed a year and you want me to go back indra says the policy is that you can be in heaven as long as you are remembered on earth the day you are forgotten on earth is the day you stop living in heaven indra dumna is surprised he didn't know this policy so he says now what indra says you have to go to earth and find out someone who still remembers you so indra dumna is sent back to earth as he as he is coming closer to earth he realizes that everything on earth has changed what actually happened is that two years in heaven he had not even completed two years but let's say two years in heaven were hundreds of years on earth that's how time moves earth moves very very quickly right <laughs> so many year, years had gone by on earth and indra dumna could no longer find everything that he had created during his reign there all the wonderful palaces the stadiums the gardens had all vanished the conference halls were no longer there anyways he reaches and starts speaking to the oldest human he could find it was a rishi called markandey rishi and indra dumna goes to him excitedly and says rishi namaskar can you remember me i am the great king indra dumna he says markandey rishi looks at him with great surprise and he says indra dumna who indra dumna i don't know any indra dumna indra dumna is shocked he thought he was so famous so well known 
looking at the disappointment on his face, Markande Rishi says, don't be disappointed, O king. There is an owl on that tree that has lived uh, longer than I had. Go and ask that owl if he remembers. So Indra Dhyumna goes to the owl and respectfully asks him, do you remember Indra Dhyumna? I am that great king. The owl says, Indra Dhyumna, who is that? Once again, the king is disappointed. He cannot believe that he has been so quickly forgotten on earth. The owl points him to a stork in a nearby lake. The stork also cannot recollect. Finally, the stork asks the king to look into the lake. Deep down is a turtle. He says that turtle is the longest living animal on earth. Maybe you should ask him. The turtle comes up and King Indra Jumna, now beginning to feel very disappointed and sad, with his face down, he asks the turtle, Do you remember me, O turtle? I am King Indra Jumna. The turtle looks up, Indra Jumna, and he has tears in his eyes. Yes, I have heard of Indra Jumna. The king has tears of joy in his eyes. Finally, someone knows. The king says, what have you heard of me? The turtle goes on to say that my grandfather told me about this king. My grandfather told me that Indra Dhyumna was a dani, a great dani who gave away a lot in charity to people all the time. He gave away jewels. He gave away clothes, he gave away lots and lots of food, many essentials, but most of all, the king practiced Godan, the highest kind of dan, which is giving away of cows. And one day, the king gave away thousands and thousands of cows. When those cows were assembled in a single place, the stamping of their hooves, as they were being led away, raised a lot of dust into the air. And when they moved away, there was a crater in the place where they once stood, these thousands of cattle. When the monsoon came down, the rain filled up this place, this crater, and that became the lake where my grandfather first lived. And he was very, very happy and I continue to live in the same lake. So, great King Indra Jumna, it is because of your goodness that this lake has happened where I stay. Indra Jumna, I'm going straight to the lessons here, realizes, next slide please, that there are several things that he has to learn, and I'm sharing that with you. He realizes that his rule is not about the infrastructure. Infrastructure goes away. It's all gone. It, it cannot be seen. It's not about what you believe you, are, you have achieved. Indra Dhyumna thought he was a great king. He will be remembered by everyone. But they didn't remember him. He realized it's not about him, the leader, who he thought was very charismatic and had a lot of ego about it. But it's about how you make them feel. Did you leave them better than when you found them? Because Indra Dhyumna made the turtle's grandfather feel so good that he narrated the story. Finally, the king realized that whatever we create may not remain. But the emotions, the happiness, the joy that we create in the people whom we work in will be remembered and passed down the generations. That's the true legacy, the lasting impact. Hardware vanishes, the software remains. Leadership is not about possessions and materialistic things. It is not about designation and car and all those things and power. It will all go away. 
how have you impacted the people in your organization in society so that you are remembered just the way indra dumna is remembered even though it's through this story just the way acharya vishnu sharma is remembered just the way chanakya is remembered i come to the next story next slide please and it's about vikram and vetal this is my fourth story and on the fifth story we will pause and once again take your learning okay so vikram and vetal you can see this is the set of stories not one story which we have all heard when we were children at least those who belong to my generation and earlier so there was a great king called king vikramaditya who lived in ujjain the place that we still have today and ujjain was a place place of great learning the king had promised just as all other great kings to take care of their praja of their subjects so once a sadhu a mendicant comes to the king and he says that look i am doing performing a great yagna a sacrifice a home for the good of this kingdom and for that i need one element that only you can get one ingredient that only you can help me procure the king says what is that he says i need a vetal a bhoot a ghost the king is not surprised the king simply asks okay where do i get it from so vetal tells him that you will need to go to the smashan bhumi the graveyard and fetch it from top of a peepal tree the king says no problem he has no fear before he goes the mendicant tells him wait 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 i have a very important instruction to give you when you pick up the vetal you put him on the back of your shoulders just the way as you can see it in the image very interesting one keep your mouth shut don't open your mouth because the moment you speak it gives a hidden power to the vetal to go away run away from you vikram says okay i understand so vikram goes picks up the vetal from the old people tree puts him on the shoulder and starts walking you can see how brave he is he's got no fear with even a vetal on his back suddenly the vetal starts speaking and he says look we have a long way to go why don't i tell you a story that way both of us will get entertained the king knows what vetal is trying to do so he does not open his mouth vetal tells him a beautiful story and asks him at the end of it a question he says if you know the answer to this question answer you must because if you don't your head will be broken into a thousand pieces so vetal says that vikram is not scared but vikram quite enjoyed the story and he knows the answer to the question that vetal asked so in his enthusiasm he tells the answer of the story as you know the vetal says tu bola main chala you spoke i will now run away and so he goes away vikram has to now come back the next night because a vetal can be picked up only once in a night and every single night the vetal tells a story vikram knows the answer to the question that is asked at the end of the story because they are very interesting stories just the way they are in panchatantra or any other story collection this continues for 24 days or 24 nights rather on the 25th night vikram goes about his business again the same way picks up the vetal puts him on his shoulder vetal starts telling him the story at the end of the story he asks him a question vikram does not feel sure does not feel certain about the answer to this question you know he is not certain and if he is not certain 
he does not say what it is. So he keeps quiet. As he keeps quiet, he starts smiling because he knows now he can finally take the Vetal to the hermit and the uh, Yadnya will be completed. His mission would be over. But Vetal, looking at the smile, also starts laughing and he says, Oh, Vikram, I know why you are happy. You think your mission is accomplished. But I think you are being foolish. Vikram is only listening to what the Vetal is saying. He says, the uh, hermit whom you are taking me to is a fake hermit. He is an evil man in the disguise of a hermit. And you know what? The moment you take me to him, that hermit will perform the sacrifice, putting me into your yajna. He will become so powerful that the first person whom he will kill is now the one who is the strongest man in this country, which is you, O Vikram. So for 24 days, when you thought I was actually creating a problem, I was asking unnecessary questions, I was making life difficult, I was saving your life. And today, when you think your problem is solved, you have no more challenges in life, is the end of your life. Please go to the next slide, Tejan. So he asked Vikram the question which is very, very powerful and has got lots of lessons within. He says, if you can't solve problems, why would the world need you, o Vikramaditya? This is a metaphorical story, dear friends, which basically suggests that whenever we have problems, whenever we have challenges, it proves to us that we are living, that we are thriving, we are required, we are needed. And the day nobody asks us any problems, nobody complains to us, no one has grievances, the boss does not complain, the spouse does not complain, the kid does not complain, probably the need for you in this world is over, your mission is gone, completed. That's the lesson from this story, friends. Please dwell over this. I come to my last story, which is a short one. Uh, first, the lesson from another lesson from this story. Just one minute, uh, Tejal, previous slide. I just want to share with you that Chanakya has said the root of prosperity is meaningful activity, and the root of disaster is in the lack of it. Okay, I'm going to take your permission, dear friend to interact with you five minutes after the last story. Okay? Yes, please go. Next slide, please. This is a story of a hunter called Nishad. Nishad does not hunt with bow and arrow. He hunts with guns. He has a gun which he hides in the sleeve of his shirt and he reaches the forest and he shoots all the exotic birds he uses their beaks and claws and other beautiful things, feathers and so on, which he sells in the market for a very high price. Every day this indiscriminate killing goes on. The message spreads. The birds tell each other about this mean man. And as soon as the hunter enters the forest, the birds run helter-skelter. The day is reached. When the, uh, as soon as the hunter starts entering the forest, the birds vanish. They all go into hiding. And finally, there comes a day when the hunter cannot even find a single bird in the forest to kill. He is distraught. What do I do? He walks deeper and deeper into the forest. He still can't find any bird. The next day he returns, same story. One more day he returns, same story repeated. He would go hungry, right, at this rate. Lost in thought, he walks deeper and deeper into the forest, comes to a clearing where there is a beautiful lake. In that lake, he finds there is a man who looks like a hermit, 
standing with his back to him that hermit has his hands spread out his legs are in the lake knee deep in depth and the hermit seems to be praying interestingly there are lots of birds which are sitting on his shoulder and hands and they are flocking to him so the hunter could not help notice that the hermit seemed to be attracting birds whereas he was repelling birds so he notices that the hermit wears clothes of an ochre color or saffron color if you will and he thinks ah now i know it is that color which is attracting the birds tomorrow i will come back with the same color clothes saying so the hunter goes purchases clothes it's very easy in those days to get robes of a saffron color it's even easier now and act <laughs> as a sadhu as a baba this is an early story of how of an imposter so the hunter goes back the next day and he still cannot find any birds even though he is wearing the saffron robe it is probably his aura now his energy which is driving away the bird the hunter goes deeper till he reaches the lake he thinks that maybe it is the way that hermit stood in the lake that attracted the birds luckily the sadhu is not there that day so this hunter enters the lake stands over there in knee deep water closes his eyes puts his hands out and waits for one hour there's no movement for a second hour there is no movement the man continues to be there being very very patient finally one bird perches on his hand he is tempted to pull out his gun and shoot at this bird but his inner voice tells him wait 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 one bird is not enough wait by the time he opens his eyes it is late evening and he decides he has to come back the next day but now he is happy because he knows how to make this work the next day when he repeats the exercise there are two birds sitting on each arm he is tempted to pull the trigger pull out his gun and do that but he decides to wait because he wants more birds three days pass four days pass more birds start coming on the seventh day there are many birds he decides to pull out his trigger but something in him tells him please build trust with this bird first otherwise they will not come back he waits for two more days on the 10th day when there are birds flocking all around him he is ready actually he just needs to pull out the gun and get all these birds attack them as he used to earlier but his heart tells him that you don't any longer need to shoot the birds the bliss of standing in the lake in the way that he i that the way that i did all these days itself is so powerful so beautiful and the birds who trust you and land on you requires no attraction in any other way you don't need to force yourself in any ways to bring those birds to you they come to you the beauty of this experience stops him from pulling out the trigger any more and this hunter from that day onwards no longer is a hunter he is now a hermit who lives on the fruits and roots of the forest itself and enjoys the daily experience of being in harmony with the birds so that's the final story friends quickly put your experiences uh, your learning from this story and any questions that you may have in q and a uh, please go to the next slide uh, tejal one single lesson please put your uh, lessons yes very beautiful mutual trust increases over the period my lesson from this the world inside is the world outside as the man became peaceful within 
the world outside transformed. As he was filled with love within, the bird started getting attracted to him, feeling his energy of love. Yes, that's the most powerful lesson from this. But you can also see that this story is not about hunter. This story is about you and me. Continue to please post your lesson, friend. This story is about you and me. Because we need to work on the world inside of us. All the time as managers and leaders, we are told you need to manage people, manage circumstances, manage and put out fires. Completely wrong. Indian wisdom says you manage your world within and the world outside manages itself. You still need to face it like Vikram did. But if you love within, everything becomes much easier. So I bring this session to a close. I'm open to questions. Tejal, you can go to the last slide. I had put in a bonus story in case we had time. Yes. So I want to, uh, you can go to the previous slide. I want to leave you finally with last, uh, the pre yeah, with three S's of Indian wisdom, study by self and study of self called Swadhyay. Submitting yourself to the guru which is called Sharnagati and leadership is service of the people, customers and employees. Yes, Tejal. Last slide, open to questions. Going to request for five minutes of interaction provided my friend Karn allows us to do. Karn, may I please have your permission for a few minutes of questions? Karn, are you there? Sheta, are you there? Okay, I'm taking that as permission. Yes. <laughs> Karn? Yes, yes. I was trying to okay. unmute and my system had got stuck. But definitely we can we can take a couple of minutes. Yes. yes. So friends, please put in your questions. I think y'all have been amazing in your reflection. So you have followed it as well as I intended it to be. But now I request you for any of your questions and encourage you to pursue Indian wisdom. I want to tell you that we just gave you a taste of flavor of all that is there. Those who have known me for a while know that there is a wealth of wisdom which cannot be completed in a lifetime. So hopefully there will be a lot more available on various platforms and perhaps even through TMPC. Your questions please. Yeah. Is there a course on story storytelling I can take? Yes, Gayatri, absolutely there will be. Uh, so, you know, there are various uh, storytelling programs that I've seen from uh, uh, various uh, trainers. But uh, I and one of my colleagues have created a course now. I'm happy to uh, take this question offline. It will be focused only on learning from Indian wisdom. Okay? If that's the focus. And that's in line with my purpose, which is about taking Indian wisdom back. So, yes, you can absolutely uh, go through that. Yes, anyone else? Any questions, please? We'll just take one or two more questions and then we will close. Or any reflection? Anybody? Yes, contact details are there <laughs> on your screen. <laughs> you can speak to Tejal, my colleague, who has uh, done you know this amazing job of creating, uh, co-creating the session and creating this presentation. Thanks, uh, Tejal. And uh, back to you, Karn and Team TMTC. I think you all have been amazing and helped me so much in this opportunity to reach out to the audience. Over to you, Karn. Thank you, thank, thank you, Rajesh, so much. Uh, you know, I firstly want to thank you because uh, there is so much wealth of uh, knowledge, and uh, to cover this in the uh, minutes that we had uh, was something which is, you know, and, and in the manner that you did uh, was quite amazing. And uh, also because uh, right at the start, to a certain extent, as we see you right now visually, we, you were multitasking, right? 
And to still continue with that, that also talks a lot about experience and to ensure that as from, from a recipient end, we didn't realize that you must have spent the last 50 minutes holding on to your phone. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Enjoyed all of it, no problem. And I'd like to just thank all the participants also who were attending today. Thank you so much. And uh, on behalf of uh, TMPC, I'd like to thank Tejal for being the efficient, you know, uh, backup for uh, Rajesh. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank Alok and Shweta, who were part of our team, who managed the show at the back. And also Pearl, who uh, helped us create the uh, poster for this event. Thank you, everyone, and look forward to seeing you in the next Learning Latitude webinar.